The Magnificent One is brought to you by Molson Breweries, proudly associated with Canadian hockey for over 35 years. NHL Awards, the last official function of the hockey season that was. And one week before, Mario Lemieux will marry. A last official function of other sorts. 20 seconds. Thank you. Can I take an elevator? <laughs> yeah. The year had begun with a celebration of a second consecutive Stanley Cup. And with the game's best player, there were heady expectations in Pittsburgh for another. I'm size. I'm giving him his award, so you have to give him. Hi, Mara. I'm Peter Jennings. Yeah, Peter, how are you? All right. Yeah. Go on. Here, I'll take it. Thanks, Thanks, I'll put the bit. How are you guys doing? All right? Great, man. All right. Can I ask you a question? Got a quick shot right here. Are you human? <laughs> there you go, buddy. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. All right. Nice Thank you. Right. See you. Hope everything goes right. How are you? Thank you. I'm going through that session right now. So are you? Just, yeah, I've got it pretty well conquered. It was an improbable three months that saw Mario Lemieux move from radiation treatment back to the ice. There, he quickly recaptured the form that would yield another NHL scoring title, while placing the Penguins on the threshold of becoming hockey's next dynasty. Somebody wants your autograph in California. Please, I'm a big fan. Come on, huh? Thanks. How are you? Doing? How are you? Good. Feeling good? What are you doing, huh? Kind of working on it. Feeling good? Yeah, not bad. Good. Feeling better. It simply was not to be for the Muir and the Penguins who struggled in the playoffs. A bitter confrontation with New York's Islanders in the Patrick Division final had seen Penguin fortunes hang in the balance. In the end, though, the New Yorkers shocked even themselves. In a season of upheaval, it was fitting that this night was Mario Lemieux's. First, the Masterton Trophy, recognizing perseverance. I'm very proud to have this honor. I uh, certainly want to take this opportunity to thank all the fans across the National Hockey League um, who have supported me uh, really when I needed it uh, back in January. Uh, thank you for all your letters and, and uh, cards and support. And uh, See you next year, I guess. Thank you. Moments later, a second. The Art Ross for even scorer. Mario Lemieux. Finally, a third. The Hart Trophy, given to the NHL's most valuable player. Former Hart winner and Montreal Canadien great, Guy Lafleur would make the presentation. For Lemieux, the moment resolved his childhood ambition. Uh, this certainly means a lot uh, coming from my idol, uh, Guy Lafleur. I used to watch him back in the 70s, Guy, uh, on TV, and I really enjoy watching you play. And you were my idol for, for a long time and still is my idol. No player in NHL history had ever won each of the Hart, Art Ross, and Masterton trophies. Yet Mario Lemieux had captured all three in one remarkable year. It is little wonder that Lemieux dominates the game of hockey. 
At six foot four and more than 220 pounds, he cuts an imposing presence on the ice. There have been big players before, but none could do the things that Mario Lemieux does. He makes everything look so easy, even the hard plays, he makes it look so easy. Right from the start, Lemieux demonstrated an uncompromising devotion to the extraordinary. He does things with the puck that uh, no, people, no, no other person in our game can do that. By simply moving the puck from one side of his body to the other, a reach of more than 16 feet extends his superiority. He just takes over again. He's just a dominant force. With an almost deliberate ease, he foretells each play before it unfolds. Quietly knowing where to be, when to strike. His size, his strength, his reach, he's got speed, finesse. Uh, he's basically just an incredible talent. Still, it is the sheer artistry of his play that captivates. Scoring goals when they should not rightfully be scored. Seizing the moment. Eclipsing the best players in the game. He scares teams, you know, on the defense as well as the offense. I mean, he's uh, he's intimidating force. But the harsh demeanor of hockey has exacted a toll. With his back, it depends. I mean, if his, he gets a clean bill of health and, uh, you know, he keeps himself in good shape, uh, he can be dominant for the next five years, no question. For Mario Lemieux, uncertain health hasn't discouraged his will to succeed. Our only objective is, is to win the cup and regain the cup here in Pittsburgh. Uh, um, I think we have the uh, players and the talent to do it. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, keeping everybody healthy, and I think that we have a pretty good chance of doing it. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by Canadian Air Cargo. We asked Canadian Air Cargo people if they had anything they wished to express. Bob, Mickey, and Barb talked about the way we handle anything from envelopes and packages to the big stuff. Renata and Terry expressed delight with our beautiful new freighters. These guys stress service quality and the care we take with every shipment. Finally, we asked Dave here to express himself. But he said our spacious envelope just wasn't quite big enough. Express overnight, door to door, from just $9.99. getting gifts you can't use. Stock up on holiday packs of Pepsi products and save over $100 on stuff you can. Have fun. Be merry. Party with Pepsi. Kim Leger, Esquire. Corey Boisseau, Esquire. Introducing the Esquire watch collection. Susan Tyler, Esquire. Edward Zosky, Esquire. Annette Potansky, Esquire. Canada's newest line of watches with quality Swiss quartz movement, scratch-resistant crystals, starting at only $80. Melissa Roy, Esquire. 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 The Esquire watch. It has your name on it. Frank Mahovlich, Esquire. These days, many families have an agreement. 
If a problem comes up around drinking, one of us will help out tonight. And we won't talk about how it happened until tomorrow. Hey, Remington, shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. Remington introduces the triple foil. The only shaver with three narrow microscreens to cross-cut each whisker three times. For hard-to-shave places on hard-to-shave faces. No one else has anything like the Remington triple foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. customer, age six. Liquid assets, 279 nickels and counting. Financial goal, mountain bike or nickel tycoon. A small suggestion, start with the basics and see where it leads. On ending an illustrious junior A career for Valvoisin, it was apparent to all around him as well. The bright lights and big dollars of the National Hockey League beckoned. Pittsburgh's sad sack penguins, who called an igloo home, were Mario's chief suitors. As hockey's worst team, the Penguins held first pick in the 1984 amateur draft. And it was clear to everyone who they were taking. It's going to be tough, uh, a couple first year for a, for a team because uh, the Penguins have three choice in the first round, so it will be good in uh, three or four years because, you know, they, have, they got uh, good players in Pittsburgh. Penn's GM, Eddie Johnson, knew better than anyone. Lemieux would be his bad team's savior. Eddie Johnson came in Laval and he, he talks to me after the game and uh, he said that I will be a spec. Nobody watched Mario more than I did that particular year. I, I think I maybe spent half of our season down there looking at him and you know, but it wasn't very hard to pick Mario Lemieux because he, he was by far the best player that year in the draft. Further hesitation. When draft day came appropriately right in Mario's hometown, Eddie Johnson surprised no one. Is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? La première choix de Pittsburgh, number 66, Mario Lemieux. Protocol dictated that the NHL's new chattels sport their future jerseys. But Mario had a contract squabble with the Pens, and he wouldn't be paraded. Uh, there was a big difference at the time in the contract, so uh, I was advised by uh, the people that I was working with at the time not to go down to the table to uh, take a stance. And, uh, certainly did that, and uh, sometimes you, you regret what you do when you're younger, when you're not mature, but uh, uh, that's the decision that I took at the time, and uh, I'm, I'm certainly uh, going to live with it. Within a week, the two sides had come to terms, and the Lemieux had come to Pittsburgh. There was never any question that Mario Lemieux would play in the NHL, but there was considerable doubt whether he would dominate as he had in junior. Serve notice quickly. His first chip in his first NHL game. A few nights later, early in the opening home game at the Igloo, with those closest to him in attendance, Mario made his mark in an unexpected manner, engaging little known Gary Lupo in an old fashioned fist fight on ice. The fans loved what they saw. The Vancouver Canucks were hardly amused. That was my first fight in, in the National Hockey League. Uh, um, you know, when you're young and you try to make an impression on the city and the fans here in Pittsburgh, you do things that uh, I normally uh, never did in, in junior. Pittsburgh responded. Penguin games that had been half full before were sold out now. Mario Lemieux was the reason. The 18-year-old French-Canadian had made hockey exciting again. He'd given the Penguins the prospect of building a champion, 
and he hadn't wasted any time doing either. There was not much doubt now the vitality of hockey in Pittsburgh rested with Mario Lemieux. It wasn't long before the hockey world was measuring the young centerman's prowess with that of player of the age, Edmonton's Wayne Gretzky. Mario, the rookie sensation, proved to be an adversary worth noting for Gretzky with an eye-catching performance in the mid-season All-Star game. Two goals and an assist made Lemieux game MVP. That first season in the U.S. wasn't all so easy. Though Eddie Johnson had found Mario a temporary home with the Matthews family, he left behind his best friend and sweetheart, Nathalie Asselin. He missed her dearly. I think he was very homesick. He missed his family a great deal, and Natalie. Um, I, I don't think we realized then how difficult this whole transition was for him. The Matthews remain close friends and regulars at Penn Games. Tom Matthews remembers well how tough it was for Mario. The language was a big barrier for Mario at the time because he's such a proud person. And he didn't want to appear that he didn't know what he was saying or that he said it incorrectly. So rather than do that, he didn't say anything. But the quietly confident rookie understood his role as the faltering franchise's last hope. If Mario hadn't come, we wouldn't have hockey in Pittsburgh. And suddenly, on an 18-year-old boy's shoulders, that's a heavy burden. I sense, as time went on, that Mario was able to accept that in his own quiet way. And he still does it in a quiet way. Having been separated, Mario and Natalie's bond strengthened, and by year two, the couple had set up house in Pittsburgh. Girlfriends weren't really welcome at the Matthews house. That was the rule of the house, which, which is fair. Um, but no, we moved to a condo, and uh, Nancy helped us find the condo, and uh, we just settled in and uh, brought our cats down, and uh, that was it. Today, Pittsburgh remains home for Natalie and Mario Lemieux. They have only recently moved to the stately suburb of Sewickley, intent on securing a retreat from superstardom. Mario has made every effort to keep public profile and private life distinct. He's a hockey player and he's very good at it, but that's not who I'm living with and that's not who I married. I married the person, just the private person. That person who is a good father, who is uh, very funny and very private. But celebrity doesn't come without obligation. Mario Lemieux knows that. He makes numerous charitable appearances each year and ironically has been spokesman for the Pittsburgh Cancer Institute for six years now. Lemieux is not often seen anywhere in public without a legion of admirers. Even the quietest moments are subject to compromise by the curious. It's pretty tough going out. Um, we haven't been in a movie theater for like years. Um, restaurant, we always go to the same restaurant because the owner knows us and they just put us in a corner. And, um, but I mean, that's the price you have to pay. My privacy is very important to myself and my family, and uh, uh, I've always been that way, uh, to, to remain uh, very private, and uh, sometimes it's tough because of what I do and what I represent to the fans in the city or in Pittsburgh, but uh, for the most part, uh, the fans are, are pretty good about it. They know that uh, uh, from over the years, from learning from, from myself, that uh, I'm very private and uh, I'd like it to, uh, to remain that way. Some would have it otherwise. Lemieux's intense protection of his private world has made him the subject of criticism over the years. Thank you, Miguel. Okay. No problem. He remains resolute. I just don't pay too much attention to that. Uh, I know that uh, the people that are close, close to me, my family, my friends, uh, uh, um, 
know my character and they know what what I'm all about and uh, that's that's the most important thing to me uh, um, you know there's a lot of uh, uh, different things that uh, people are going to say about you and, and uh, you can't stop them from from saying that Lemieux finds himself most at ease around aspiring hockey players having known a similar dream as a youngster he understands the importance of role models certainly try to do as much as I can, especially for little kids that come up, uh, try to spend some time with them and, and talk to them a little bit, and uh, I'm sure that uh, they will remember that for the rest of their lives like I did. While in past years, Mario has been on the ice, this summer back surgery has said otherwise. He is still on hand to share stories and promote enthusiasm for the game he loves. The children are always most interested in hearing how their hero made it to the big leagues. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty good when I was 10 years old. Uh, you know, I got good through uh, uh, spending a lot of time on the ice and practicing and, and playing with, uh, uh, with young kids like you guys. And uh, I, was, I was pretty good when I was younger. So I certainly work at it. Where was your first rank? My first rank? Uh, I grew up in Montreal in Canada. And uh, we used to uh, have a couple of rinks near my house. And I just uh, started to, to skate outside. Lemieux fashioned his game from an early stage on an outdoor rink close by the family home in working class Montreal. Hockey was a passion from the beginning. Saturday nights at the Lemieux's were always spent with the red, white, and blue of Les Canadiens. Pierrette Lemieux fondly recalls the winter day she was summoned outdoors to see a young boy impressing onlookers. I go outside, there's my Mario. He didn't want a chair. It was natural for him on the ice. He went on that way and continued to do great things on the ice. It was natural for him. Because of Lemieux, the Hurricanes of Villamard became renowned. Even Canadian's coach, Scotty Bowman, came to see what all the fuss was about. Mario's skill made him a budding celebrity, sometimes found in the circle of his idol, Guy Lafleur. By the time he was ready for junior hockey, his bedroom had become a shrine of achievement. Before his 16th birthday, Mario Lemieux had joined Laval of the Quebec Major Junior League. Its teams had a penchant for a high-scoring brand of hockey. Young Mario fit in well. With a turn on Gretzky's ever-familiar 99, he trademarked the inverse number 66. His puck handling dazzled opposition and audiences alike. Lemieux was a gate attraction, filling houses wherever Laval played. A rivalry with Verdun star Pat LaFontaine developed. The two were the subject of almost constant debate. When LaFontaine joined the NHL the next year, Lemieux became the sole focus of Eddie Johnson's scouts. Mario to me is uh, he's a great hockey player. He's got moves as good as any, well, as good, better than any hockey player in the National Hockey League. I think he's going to be a great asset to us in Pittsburgh Penguins. In his final year at Laval, Mario Lemieux knew the splendor of the NHL was close at hand. So did opponents who wanted one last shot at him. The media got in the act, chastising Lemieux for not accepting an offer to play in Sweden over Christmas with the national junior team. Lemieux stood his ground firmly. I made my decision, and uh, they seem to be not happy about my decision. Uh, I don't know what to say about that.
There were cries he was unpatriotic and threats of suspension. Mario was unmoved. Last year, uh, I went to uh, uh, Russia with uh, Team Canada, and I have a bad experience. And uh, I don't want to go again uh, for a bad experience. While his last few months in junior hockey carried the weight of controversy, Lemieux had managed to supersede even the wildest expectations. He'd averaged more than four points a game, scoring 133 goals. In his final year, Lemieux shattered Lafleur's junior scoring record, counting 282 points. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by Canada Trust. Presenting Borderless Service from Canada Trust. An exclusive package of U.S. services for a world without borders. Nothing else you pack will carry so much weight. Canada Trust. Thinking like a customer. In a far stretch of sea, the wind howled with all its breath and the waves dashed with ferocious venom. Icelandic water and cold, damp fog brought out the cruelest of coughs and sore throats. It was with good fortune that pharmacist James Lofthouse had created a medicated lozenge from all natural sources over 128 years ago. Fisherman's friend, 128 years of effectiveness for relief of coughs. This happy little fellow is an ice beer molecule, surrounded by millions of other ice beer molecules. In fact, high temperatures cause molecules to move apart. Say, where's everybody going? Fact, cold temperatures cause molecules to move together. Fact, only Canadian ice is ice brewed and ice filtered. Conclusion, for an icy clean taste, try Canadian ice. Tomorrow's beer, today. No ads were spent in the making of this commercial. Hey, Remington. Shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. Remington introduces the triple foil. The only shaver with three narrow microscreens to cross-cut each whisker three times. For hard-to-shave places on hard-to-shave faces. No one else has anything like the Remington triple foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. of getting gifts you can't use? Stock up on holiday packs of Pepsi products and save over $100 on stuff you can. Have fun. Be merry. Party with Pepsi. Somewhere, someone's thinking about a cure for cancer. A cure for politicians. A vaccine for baldness. A personality scanning device. A nifty little thing that'll keep your shirt tucked in. A cure for hunger. 12-hour breath mints workable education system and self-cleaning dishes. Got any ideas? Whatever you'd like to do, we'd like to help make it happen. I think it was a turning point at the time. Uh, I think it just came at the right time in my career. Being a part of a team and knowing what it takes to win and what it takes to, to be successful. Learning how to win with uh, guys that have won cups in the past, the Gretzky, Messier. At that time, he was just getting to the point where he was gonna flourish as a true superstar. But Lemieux led the uh, tournament in goals, Gretzky in points, and uh, they were magic out there. Play in the same line. Both those guys fed off each other. They just uh, they went to town.
1987 Canada Cup convened all the top players in hockey on six international sides. It was here Mario Lemieux's reputation gained prominence. Teaming with superior players for the first time, Lemieux went on a scoring rampage, led by the combination of Gretzky to Lemieux, Canada went unbeaten into the cup championship. In on left wing to Bork, Mario Lemieux shoots, he scores! Mario Lemieux, Canada has the lead for the first time. A three-game final against the Soviet national team would provide a sterner test. I think the Russians are a much better team than, than the Czechs, and uh, when they get a uh, 2 nothing lead, they're pretty hard to play against. For three hot September nights, there wasn't much else in Canada that mattered. The Soviets had stunned Canada in overtime in game one. And game two went into a second extra period. It was the biggest goal in a young career. The third and deciding game was intense. And when the Soviets grabbed an early three goal lead, Canada was in trouble. The Canadians proved resilient though. And with a little over a minute to go, the score was tied and overtime loomed. The rest is history. For a new generation, Lemieux's goal became remembered on the level of Paul Henderson's in Moscow 15 years earlier. Amid the hoopla, there were rumors that Wayne and Mario hadn't got along during the tournament. There was uh, no jealousy. Uh, we had a great thing going for the last uh, few games anyway. We played together for the last two games, and uh, we had a lot of fun out there. The experience with Gretzky had paid off for Lemieux. You know, Gretz is a great team player, and, uh, um, you know, at the time he made, uh, he made some plays that... Uh, uh, we're right at the time, uh, even though it was myself that was there or somebody else, he was, he was going to make the same play anyway. I didn't see any jealousy. I never saw anything in the room. I never saw anything off the ice. Um, you know, it was uh, just a mutual understanding that, uh, you know, Mario wanted that, the top spot and Wayne wasn't going to give it to him. And that's that's makes superstars, that, that competitive edge. After the Canada Cup, it was apparent that early comparisons between the two stars hadn't been premature. While Gretzky had been rewriting the record books with the powerful Edmonton Oilers, Lemieux had been skating with the still lumbering Penguins. Things were about to change. Lemieux brought a newfound confidence to the Penguins from his Canada Cup experience. He had something to prove. Mario was tired of losing. He wanted the Penguins to become winners, and he went about seeing they did exactly that. probably the best hockey player that uh, ever played the game. Number 99 noticed his heir apparent's game resembled his own. A lot of similarities, but uh, the most obvious, I think, is the fact that uh, his ability to uh, pass the puck and be able to see people at certain times um, and the softness of his hands. Uh, I think to be a, an effective centerman, you have to be a playmaker, and he's a good playmaker. After the Canada Cup, Mario the Playmaker won his first scoring title, while Wayne was winning his last Stanley Cup in Alberta. I'm disappointed about having to leave Edmonton. I truly admire all the fans and respect 
everyone over the years. The move to Los Angeles put Gretzky in a hockey wasteland. And despite some of the old magic, there was little doubt now that the natural order of things on ice had been indelibly altered. Gretzky's reign over the NHL's most prized trophies was rudely interrupted by Lemieux. A quiet rivalry developed with things not quite as cool as they sometimes seemed. The challenge of matching up with Gretzky now appealed to Lemieux. Before a hometown crowd in the 1990 All-Star game, Mario scored four times, the first just 21 seconds into play. And the Wales Conference gets the puck. Mario right in front. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. There's Lemieux with his shot and his fourth goal. The timing for Mario's performance couldn't have been better. The All-Star game was on American Network Television for the first time. And for the first time, Mario Lemieux's hope of making the Penguins winners appeared unencumbered. But the physical nature of hockey had an adverse effect on Lemieux's young career. Opponents reasoned that if you stopped Mario, you stopped the Penguins. He was pounded relentlessly. His lower back became a problem. Finally, in the midst of an assault on Gretzky's 51-game scoring streak, he could suffer no more. The streak ended in New York at 46 games. What followed next has become frustration without end for Mario Lemieux. In 88-89, I started to miss some game because of uh, back problems. Uh, eventually, I had some surgery a couple years later and uh, uh, been fighting uh, back problems for the last uh, five, six years. His problem actually was a very complicated one. Penguin's physician, Charles Burke, inadvertently discovered the back problem in an insurance physical. At the end of the physical, this was actually added as an addendum. He complained, he said, oh, by the way, I'd had an episode or two of back pain in the past. So someone picked up on that and said, well, maybe we ought to do a CT scan of his back just to be complete and they found in what we call an asymptomatic herniated disc. Lemieux hadn't really had back problems before. He had only been occasionally annoyed by minor aches. Yet examinations revealed a severely herniated disc. In the ensuing weeks, Mario was given medication and a battery of lower back exercises. He might not require surgery if things went well, but the CT scan had, unfortunately, found more. At the same time, was also found on the opposite side of his back, a stress fracture or a small break in one of the small bones in the back. The small break in his back is more, most likely hereditary, but can be caused from the constant uh, uh, hitting flexion position that hockey players are in, because we see the same type of injury in professional football linemen. Lemieux worked in therapy for more than a month. It was no good. On July the 11th, 1990, he had the back operation. By training camp, the scar tissue around the herniated disc had contracted an infection. In fact, there was concern that, at age 25, Mario Lemieux's career might be over. Well, it's very difficult on, on myself, uh, especially uh, at this time of the year. And, uh, at this time of my career, it's, it's tough to go through, but, uh, you know, I have to uh, do whatever is best for myself and, and uh, my health. 
during the season, I went through uh, back surgery. Then the infection came along. Uh, I was in bed for about three months. I didn't know if I was going to play hockey again or let alone, let alone play hockey, just walk again. In late January, undaunted, he returned. Though missing the first 50 games of the season, Mario wanted desperately to play. He was reaching the peak of his physical abilities and could not bear the thought of sitting up. The decision was his, and as long as he wanted to play, we tried to do what we could for him. And, you know, we did caution him at the appropriate times medically when we thought that, that he might be causing more damage. but. I don't think that time ever truly arose where he was at risk of greater damage. There was many nights we literally picked him up off the training table and would sort of propel him out into a locker room to go out and put his equipment on, and he would be playing at 25%, and he was still better than everyone. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by Pepsi. Tired of getting gifts you can't use? Stock up on holiday packs of Pepsi products and save over $100 on stuff you can. Have fun. Be merry. Party with Pepsi. All growing things need time and light. So do your savings. For an enlightened way to save, try frequent purchase plans from Canada Trust for mutual funds and RSPs from as little as $10 a week. Canada Trust. Thinking like a customer. Kim Leger, Esquire. Corey Boisseau, Esquire. Introducing the Esquire Watch Collection. Susan Tyler, Esquire. Edward Zosky, Esquire. Annette Potansky, Esquire. Canada's newest line of watches with quality Swiss quartz movement, scratch-resistant crystals, starting at only $80. Melissa Roy, Esquire. 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 The Esquire Watch. It has your name on it. Frank Mahovlich, Esquire. In Canada, people respect the winter elements and will dress appropriately, easily adapting to the change of seasons. Winter where you'll find the clean, crisp taste of Molson Kinney. I love this country. And what beer's all about. Somewhere, someone's thinking about a cure for cancer, a cure for politicians, a vaccine for baldness, a personality scanning device, a nifty little thing that'll keep your shirt tucked in, a cure for hunger, 12-hour breath mints, a workable education system, and self-cleaning dishes. Got any ideas? Whatever you'd like to do, we'd like to help make it happen. In a far stretch of sea, the wind howled with all its breath and the waves dashed with ferocious venom. Icelandic water and cold, damp fog brought out the cruelest of coughs and sore throats. It was with good fortune that pharmacist James Lofthouse had created a medicated lozenge from all natural sources over 128 years ago. Fisherman's Friend, 128 years of effectiveness for relief of coughs. The 1991 playoffs saw the Pittsburgh Penguins come of age. Even with Mario Lemieux playing, few imagined the Pens had the medal to advance to the Stanley Cup final. As always, the playoffs produced furious action. There was concern about Lemieux's back handling the rigors. 
Unlike before, the Penguins proved more determined, eliminating Boston in a tough six-game series and advancing to the final. It would be Mario Lemieux's first Stanley Cup final. And coach Badger Johnson knew he needed his star healthy. The Minnesota North Stars had gone to the cup playing a roughhouse variation of the sport. Their aggressive style might not be to Lemieux's liking. But Mario was not about to be intimidated. Lemieux dominated the final series like he did the playoffs before. He scored 44 points in just 23 games, going pointless in only one of them. And his back had kept him out of but one other. The performance made Lemieux the Conn Smythe Trophy winner as playoff MVP. Badger Johnson would later remark that Mario Lemieux had established himself as one of the truly great players in hockey history. And Lemieux had finally achieved what he and the Penguins had hoped for that June afternoon in Montreal when Eddie Johnson called his name. It's a dream come, come true uh, uh, to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, that's what you, uh, you work for all your life. Uh, uh, when you're growing up, uh, practicing every day, uh, working hard, uh, you get on the big team, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's what uh, players are uh, in the National Hockey League for, is to, to win championships. Mario Lemieux had overcome a great deal in this first Stanley Cup year, and the power of the moment was never more evident than when he held Nathalie in the dressing room shortly afterwards. parents to the game and his mother saw how special this was for her son when he won the Stanley Cup I saw the look in his eye it was the same look he had as a little boy when he wanted to win Lemieux had attained his goal and finally silenced the harshest critic of all his own nagging self-doubt the victory made for a joyous flight back to Pittsburgh later that night When the newly crowned Stanley Cup champions returned home, thousands were on hand to greet them. They were just the first to do so. The Penguins had brought home the city's first ever Stanley Cup, brought the cup back to the U.S. for the first time since 1983. And, uh... Not since the New York Islanders won their fourth cup had an American team been champion. To be after the team, I'd like to present you with uh, this sweater of the Stanley Cup champion. Thank you very much. The Stanley Cup euphoria would be short-lived. By late summer, Bob Johnson had been diagnosed with multiple brain tumors. In November, he passed away. The Penguins would not forget Badger Johnson, nor would Mario Lemieux. The new season saw the Pittsburgh Penguins respond as champions. There was an air of confidence now, and despite missing 16 games, the Mieux again captured the NHL scoring title. The Penguins entered the playoffs as strong favorites to win another cup. But then, fate struck. Adam Graves slash early in game two of the Patrick Division final broke a small bone in the back of Lemieux's hand. Only a few months earlier, 
Mario had strongly denounced the NHL's tolerance of dirty play. He had been fined. His vindication now seemed somewhat ironic. He would miss the next five games. The Pens eliminated the Rangers as Lemieux and new team owner Howard Baldwin looked on. There was yet another triumphant return. Mario had been fitted with a special glove and cast. The injury hardly mattered. The Penguins swept Boston aside in four straight games. It was anticipated that the Stanley Cup final with Chicago would be close. Hawks coach Mike Keenan's charges always played a physical brand of hockey. But the Penguins simply outclassed them, winning their second consecutive cup in four games. Mario Lemieux again was the difference, making big plays with skillful assurance. He was again named playoff MVP. This Stanley Cup was different from the first. The Penguins had been expected to win, and Mario Lemieux had been expected to dominate. Neither had disappointed. The mark of true champions, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup. And when the Pens gathered at center ice that night, there was a sense that they were far from being done. That week, Fans paid tribute to their conquering heroes at Three River Stadium. The opportunity to commend his captain didn't go unnoticed by winger Phil Bork. And how about Mario, our two-time MVP? I think he deserves $4 million a year. Mr. Baldwin, don't you agree? Most were amused. Though Penn's chairman Howard Baldwin would do much better for Mario Lemieux, Baldwin had seen Orr and Gretzky get traded, and Bobby Hull jump to another league. He wasn't about to see his star fall victim to the same fate. Mario Lemieux is now signed to a lifetime commitment with the Pittsburgh Penguins Hockey Club. Lemieux signed a $42 million contract, making him the highest paid player in the game. This is certainly... Uh great uh, birthday present Howard thank you very much um, I am very excited uh, to have the opportunity to uh, be in Pittsburgh uh, probably for the rest of my life the agreement made Mario Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins partners there would be shared revenues and new marketing initiatives and strategies using Mario's name yes it's the largest contract in the NHL there's no doubt about it it should be there's only one of them. I was very fortunate to, uh, to sign that contract and uh, work with Mr. Baldwin at the time. Uh, he's, he's a very good friend of mine now, and, and uh, we spend a lot of time together. We get along just great. And to be able to maybe generate some, not maybe, but to generate more revenues for Mario and generate more revenues for us. And we've been able to do that. And um, we did it first with this kind of a contract. Now I see a lot of other teams trying to do the same thing. One team was L.A. Word was that Gretzky had cut a three-year, $25 million deal, but large sums would be deferred. I don't think anybody really knows what it is. And when we look at it and we see what it is, then we'll make a decision. I will always do right by Mario. But I, I want to see that Mr. Gretzky's contract all laid out and see these wonderful numbers on a piece of paper so that I understand it. Baldwin and Lemieux have formed a powerful alliance in an era when sport is sometimes dogged by owner-player mistrust. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by the Esquire Watch Company. Kim Leger, Esquire. Corey Boisseau. Esquire. Introducing the Esquire Watch Collection. Susan Tyler, Esquire. Edward Zaski, Esquire. Annette Potansky, Esquire. Canada's newest line of watches with quality Swiss quartz movement, scratch resistant crystals, starting at only $80. Melissa Roy, Esquire. 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 The Esquire Watch. It has your name on it. Frank Mahavlich, Esquire. <laughs> The Canadian ice beer molecule, rarely found in isolation, it prefers instead to bond with other Canadian ice beer molecules into larger, more complex structures. 
For reasons as yet unclear to science, these structures are based on multiples of six, the most complex being the bideca quadrupod, what scientists would call a 2-4. Canadian ice, tomorrow's beer, today. Hey, Remington, shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. Remington introduces the triple foil. The only shaver with three narrow microscreens to cross-cut each whisker three times. For hard-to-shave places on hard-to-shave faces. No one else has anything like the Remington triple foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. In a far stretch of sea, the wind howled with all its breath and the waves dashed with ferocious venom. Icelandic water and cold, damp fog brought out the cruelest of coughs and sore throats. It was with good fortune that pharmacist James Lofthouse had created a medicated lozenge from all natural sources. Over 128 years ago, Fisherman's Friend, 128 years of effectiveness for relief of coughs. We asked Canadian air cargo people if they had anything they wished to express. Bob, Mickey, and Barb talked about the way we handle anything from envelopes and packages to the big stuff. Renata and Terry expressed delight with our beautiful new freighters. These guys stress service quality and the care we take with every shipment. Finally, we asked Dave here to express himself. But he said our spacious envelope just wasn't quite big enough. Express overnight, door to door, from just $9.99. For Daniel Hillard, ha! the problem was how to see his kids. Can't you just tell Mom it's darling? The solution... Could you make me a woman? ...was Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello? Now, the only thing harder than being two people... I'm becoming a new man and a model father. ...is being in two places... Mrs. Doubtfire? What? ...at once. You're going into the men's room. Hmm. Robin Williams... God, it's hot in here. Ah! ...is Mrs. Doubtfire. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. It was early in the new year when the Penguins called a press conference concerning Mario Lemieux's health. There had been press conferences before, but this one was different. This is not about hockey. This is about a very precious human being who is going to recover. First and foremost, we would like to express our enormous gratitude to all members of the media for the fairness and sensitivity you have shown during this very trying time. He was shook, I was shook, the whole world was shook. Could not be shook. Team physician Charles Burke made the distressing announcement. The CT scan on January 6th revealed an enlarged mass in his neck that was separate from his salivary glands. He brought the swollen in his upper neck to our attention approximately two weeks ago. I noticed the uh, lump in my neck uh, uh, about two years ago. Uh, it was very small at the time, so uh, I didn't think anything of it. As he would extend his neck up, he would begin to almost catch his razor on it. And that's when we had some tests done, uh, MRI and CT scan, and uh, uh, he suggested to, uh, um, you know, to remove uh, uh, what was in my neck. I looked at him and, and I said, it really does bother you. You don't want it there, do you? And he said, I'd like to have it out. We recommended removal, which was done under local anesthesia on January 8th. Pathology was reviewed by a recognized Hodgkin's expert Dr. Robert Hartsock, and the diagnosis of nodular lymphocyte predominant type involving a submental lymph node was made. The diagnosis has been confirmed by other experts in the United States. I said, you have Hodgkin's disease, and basically explained to him what it was. I was shocked, uh, you know, just to, uh, uh, to hear the word cancer. Um, you know, it's very scary when you're sitting in the office with two doctors and uh, they tell you to sit down. Uh, what they're about to tell me is, uh, you know, not a good thing. And then they tell me you know, all different, different kinds of things to, uh, uh, to help me uh, cope with it. So um, it was very difficult for, uh, for a few days to, uh, uh, to accept uh, that I had cancer. And uh, uh, it was certainly a tough, uh, tough few days of my life. It has been recommended that he undergo four weeks of radiation treatment. The scary thing that occurred in him was when we did a several of the tests, abnormalities showed up elsewhere. What appeared to look like a node showed up in his chest 
and what appeared to look like further disease showed up in one of his lungs. During his staging workup, a lower respiratory infection has been identified. This will be treated with antibiotics. So um, our decision at that time was, do we go and biopsy these areas, which would have put him out for the season, or do we wait two weeks, put him on antibiotics, and assume it's an infection? But there was much more to worry about. Uh, there's been a, a couple of my uncles that uh, um, did have, uh, have, have cancer and died from it. Uh, that was a few years ago. Lemieux's family also had a history of Hodgkin's disease. A cousin in her 20s had only a few years before died from its effects. Mario remained optimistic. You know, I faced a lot of uh, uh, battles in my life uh, since I was real young and uh, always came out on top and I certainly intend to do uh, the same uh, uh, with this disease. Leaving the press conference that day, Lemieux was unsure whether the casually mentioned lung infection was cancerous. Few knew of the dire situation. Mario had been having his best year. Hockey would have to wait now. It seemed a faraway thought, and never further than when Mario confronted Nathalie with the news. Yeah, I came back from the doctor in the morning, and, and uh, the whole way back I was crying. I didn't know uh, how to tell her, and, and um, got up the steps, and I was fine as soon as I saw her. Uh, started crying and, and uh, couldn't stop crying for, for at least an hour. And, uh, all that time, she didn't know what was going on. She knew that something was bad, but, uh, uh, you know, didn't know exactly what was wrong. And, and finally, I uh, had the courage to tell her. And, and he just broke down in tears and said that he had Hodgkin's. And um, I didn't really understand it. And uh, he, he explained to me that one of his cousins had had Hodgkin's and had died from it, but um, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, he, he was fine, he was healthy, and he, he just looked normal, and I just didn't believe that he was, he was sick inside. The medical center in Beaver, Pennsylvania, a short drive from Mario Lemieux's house. It was here on February 1st that the superstar became a cancer patient and began the prescribed four weeks of radiation therapy. Using an assumed identity, Lemieux arrived each morning before 9 a.m. He was fitted into a mask and underwent treatments run by oncologist James Hughes. He was really very calm. Obviously, uh, when somebody tells you you have a malignant condition, and you're in your late 20s and you're, 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 you're king of the heap, uh, you know, it becomes a shock. And initially, obviously, the one thing is you think is a sentence of death, and then when people start telling, well, it's not as bad as you imagine it is, and that the cure rate is really very high, I think he relaxed, and, and uh, he seemed to accept what we were proposing, and uh, he was really a very compliant patient. Each treatment would last precisely five minutes and would have to be repeated identically every time. It's very important that when these patients are treated each day, uh, you can reproduce the uh, treatment position very accurately. So we, we make what's called an immobilization shell. We made this thing that, that uh, exactly fitted Mario's face and his upper, upper chest. And each day he would be, would be fitted into that, uh, that mold. Once strapped into his shell, Lemieux was alone. The radiation room sealed off from the outside world by seven foot thick concrete walls. Uh, even though I was, I was uh, on the table getting some radiation, I, I didn't think about the cancer. It would be difficult to think of anything else as he was radiated in the neck from three sides. I was uh, trying to think about positive things and, and uh, uh, not thinking about too much about the cancer, and, and uh, that's basically how I, I got through it. The tattoo markings on Mario's chest were a grim reminder of his condition. As treatments wore on, he occasionally tired, at times finding it difficult to complete workouts. Maintaining a brave exterior, he returned to Montreal for the NHL All-Star Game. NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman had asked Lemieux to attend the game as a special guest of honor and Mario's hometown greeted him with a two-minute standing ovation.
A few weeks later, on March 2nd, Lemieux chartered a plane to Philadelphia. Only hours after his last dose of radiation, he was on spectrum ice. He had missed 23 games in all. While Lemieux would not yet be physically in shape, there was concern whether psychologically he would ever possess the same determination. He delivered the answer with his first goal since the start of January. Mario Lemieux had indeed returned. Lemieux's homecoming was only his third game back. In New York, he managed to play but five minutes. Early on, his foray into the Boston zone created a goal in a 3-2 Penguin win. In the weeks that followed, Lemieux scored in bunches. In a period of 16 games, he knocked in 27 goals. At the same time, tallying 51 points. An average of over three per game. It was as if he had never been out at all. The performance was nothing short of amazing. The Muse maneuverability had been compromised by back pain, and he still carried the ravages of cancer treatment. But wanting badly to win a third cup and defend his scoring title pushed him. An old rival, Pat LaFontaine, had passed the injured Lemieux to lead the scoring race. By the time Mario reappeared, he trailed LaFontaine by 12 points. There was little over a month to go in the regular season, and many doubted if Mario could catch LaFontaine. Is the scoring race over? <laughs> Not, that Not that I know of. Not that I know of. They should never have questioned Mario Lemieux. This night alone, he banged in five. In only 60 games, he had 69 goals. His 160 points won the title over LaFontaine by precisely 12 points. A 24-point turnaround. Since Mario's comeback game at home, the Pens had gone on an unbelievable 17-game winning streak. The team's 119 points were the most by anyone since the heydays of the Oilers. On the eve of the playoffs, everyone knew Pittsburgh was, again, the team to beat. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by Microsoft. Somewhere, someone's thinking about a cure for cancer, a cure for politicians, a vaccine for baldness, a personality scanning device, a nifty little thing that'll keep your shirt tucked in, a cure for hunger, 12-hour breath mints, a workable education system, and self-cleaning dishes. Got any ideas? Whatever you'd like to do, we'd like to help make it happen. days, many families have an agreement. If a problem comes up around drinking, one of us will help out tonight. And we won't talk about how it happened. Until tomorrow. getting gifts you can't use stock up on holiday packs of pepsi products and save over a hundred dollars on stuff you can have fun be merry party with pepsi
We asked Canadian Air Cargo people if they had anything they wished to express. Bob, Mickey, and Barb talked about the way we handle anything from envelopes and packages to the big stuff. Renata and Terry expressed delight with our beautiful new freighters. These guys stress service quality and the care we take with every shipment. Finally, we asked Dave here to express himself. But he said our spacious envelope just wasn't quite big enough. Express overnight, door to door, from just $9.99. Kim Lazy, Esquire. Corey Boisseau, Esquire. Introducing the Esquire Watch Collection. Susan Tyler, Esquire. Edward Zosky, Esquire. Annette Potansky, Esquire. Canada's newest line of watches with quality Swiss quartz movement, scratch-resistant crystals, starting at only $80. Melissa Roy, Esquire. 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 The Esquire Watch. It has your name on it. Frank Mahavlich, Esquire. First, there was McCain Pizza Pockets. Now, there's... McCain Super Pockets. It's a perfection. Zesty Chicken Fiesta. Delicious Western style. Creamy egg and cheese. McCain Super Pockets. All with a crust that's baked, not fried. So there's no leaks, no mess. McCain Super Pockets. Super taste, super snacks. Pittsburgh has a long tradition in sport. Bill Mazeroski won a memorable World Series at Old Forbes Field here, and football Steelers have won four Super Bowls. Now, Mario Lemieux has joined the greats on the city's wall of champions in the downtown core. The fans of Pittsburgh wouldn't want it any other way. Mario's peers in the sports world respect the relationship he has with the community. Mario definitely uh, exemplifies what Pittsburgh is all about. He's a hard worker. Uh, he's a great player, first of all. You have to, have to appreciate his abilities. Uh, but one of the things that you, you like most about him is that uh, uh, he's good to the fans. And uh, anybody that uh, is that big in a community and is still uh, very personable to the fans is, uh, is a tremendous person. back in charge as last year's playoff got underway. The Penguins had entered the Stanley Cup round unbeaten in 18 games. And they took it to the New Jersey Devils at every opportunity. Mario's play recalled previous cup. Only on occasion were the Devils able to slow him down usually relying on questionable tactics to do so. There was concern. The Mew was aware that his back could only withstand so much. And the playoffs, hockey's second season, could go on for almost two months. It was over quickly. The Devils yielding in just five games and Mario and the Pens eyed their next opponent. Washington would be preferable. The Pens had always had trouble with the Islanders. Back in the 70s, the New Yorkers had come back from three games down to eliminate Pittsburgh. It wouldn't come easy. Mario knew that. The Penguins had struggled all year against the Islanders. While there was no comparing the two teams' talent, the Islanders worked hard. They wouldn't beat themselves. Mario's back began to act up again. He had been skating with pain. Shortly after the first game was underway, he would be unable to continue. not dress for the second game. But the nature of this thing is as quickly as it sometimes comes on, it goes away just as quickly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what's been happening for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, the sharp pain comes, and the more I play, the worse it gets. 
Mario remains optimistic he would return shortly. He had no idea his back would seize up by morning. The next day, he could barely get out of bed. After playing only briefly in New York, Lemieux underwent traction to stretch his muscles, took medication to ease the pain. It worked. Now with the series tied at two, the Penguins had home ice and momentum. They wouldn't take long to capitalize, scoring three early goals in succession. This night, the Penguins would coast to a 6-3 win to take the series lead, but not before the mood of things changed considerably. There was bad blood, and it would spill over to New York two nights later. Mario felt the weight of the series on his shoulders, and what's worse, with a sore back, he felt it slipping away. Though he managed a goal, it was the Islanders who forced the seventh and deciding game. With the Penguins back home for the seventh game, Pittsburghers were confident of victory. After all, they were the Stanley Cup champions and had won big games before. The team was accorded a rousing reception, and they came out determined to put the Islanders behind them. But for the New Yorkers' last line of defense, they would. Then the unthinkable. Kevin Stevens, knocked unconscious in midair, had his face strike the ice. He was rushed to hospital for emergency surgery. And when Mario hit the goalpost, it was obvious Penguin fortunes didn't change. The Penguins would score first, fanning hopes. But the Islanders would score in sudden death overtime, closing the season with a deafening silence for all but an elated few. In a year of extremes, Mario's health frustrations were tempered by the arrival of a baby daughter in April. 
and his marriage to Natalie Aslan in June. They were wed in Montreal's majestic Notre Dame Cathedral. Father Michel Fortin, who had known Mario since his childhood, presided before several hundred of their closest friends and family. Mario had met Nathalie when he was 17. She was only 15. They both knew from that moment that this day would come. C'est le super Mario. C'est Mario le magnifique. Ils viennent juste de découvrir à cause de tes exploits et parce que tu es le meilleur joueur d'hockey au monde. Nathalie, je te donne cette alliance en signe de notre amour. It was a traditional wedding, and as they had wandered away from the spotlight of celebrity. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by Remington. Hey Remington, shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. Remington introduces the triple foil. The only shaver with three narrow micro screens to cross cut each whisker three times. For hard to shave places on hard to shave faces. No one else has anything like the Remington Triple Foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. In Canada, parties are planned to suit the season. Witness the fall party. The winter party. The spring party. And the ever popular summer party. The seasonal party where you'll find the clean, crisp taste of Molson Canadian and what beer's all about. Somewhere, someone's thinking about a cure for cancer, a cure for politicians, a vaccine for baldness, a personality scanning device, a nifty little thing that'll keep your shirt tucked in, a cure for hunger, 12-hour breath mints, a workable education system, and self-cleaning dishes. Got any idea? Whatever you'd like to do, we'd like to help make it happen. We asked Canadian Air Cargo people if they had anything they wished to express. Bob, Mickey, and Barb talked about the way we handle anything from envelopes and packages to the big stuff. Renata and Terry expressed delight with our beautiful new freighters. These guys stress service quality and the care we take with every shipment. Finally, we asked Dave here to express himself. But he said our spacious envelope just wasn't quite big enough. Express overnight, door to door, from just $9.99. Presenting borderless service from Canada Trust. An exclusive package of U.S. services for a world without borders. Nothing else you pack will carry so much weight. Canada Trust. Thinking like a customer. In a far stretch of sea, the wind howled with all its breath and the waves dashed with ferocious venom. Icelandic water and cold, damp fog brought out the cruelest of coughs and sore throats. It was with good fortune that pharmacist James Lofthouse had created a medicated lozenge from all natural sources over 128 years ago. Fisherman's friend, 128 years of effectiveness for relief of coughs. The Magnificent One is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Friend. If there is one sport other than hockey, it is golf. A scratch handicap, Mario plays every day in the off-season when there isn't a commitment. Hey, 
go, sir. Right. Hi, how are you? You play hockey? <laughs> floor hockey. Floor Are you good? Score a lot of goals? No? Huh? All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> the collector's convention in Chicago. Literally thousands are on hand to meet Mario Lemieux. He is announcing a new agreement today, one that has been carefully considered by Mario and his partners. I really believe that uh, Leaf Hockey Cards have the best product on the market, and uh, that is the main reason why I decided to associate my name with uh, Leaf Hockey Cards. Bill uh, Barnes and Richard Chimura oversee the marketing of Mario, and they take a very deliberate approach. We sit down on a regular basis and we talk about opportunities that I know exist and whether Mario would like me to go to the next step up the ladder with it. And there are certain parameters that I operate within and nothing happens until Mario has explained the entire program and he signs off on it. Still, with all the notoriety and money hockey has given him, Mario thinks of only one thing. Your hockey is the most important thing in the world. It doesn't matter if uh, uh, you, know, you have a big house, you have cars, you have uh, money. It doesn't matter if, you're, uh, if you don't have your health. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm going to go through uh, back surgery again. Uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be off for about six weeks. And then, uh... In late July, Mario Lemieux underwent back surgery again. It was felt that scar tissue built up from previous operations was causing the problem. Now, the game has asked him for yet another comeback. At 28 years of age, Lemieux is working harder than ever before to get back. As the Penguins began the new campaign, Mario Lemieux waited in the wings. A new season brings new hopes and the question of when Mario will return. An old friend is back in the fold. And GM Craig Patrick brought in enforcer Marty McSorley to discourage the opposition from taking liberties with Lemieux. Mario did play briefly in the new season, even recorded seven points in a little over three games. But he has once more been sidelined with back then. Now the hockey world waits in the hope that its brightest star will return soon. And as Mario Lemieux looks on from afar, he knows he faces yet another challenge of character. As long as uh, I'm going to be successful, as long as I'm going to be able to uh, do the things that uh, uh, um, I'm cap capable of, um, I'm going to play. And, and uh, hopefully my back's going to remain in good shape for the next uh, uh, five years and, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish my contract which uh, uh, will end in about five years.